everyone, thank you for joining today's webinar. This is the seventh event from our Sterile Filling 101 webinar series, and today we will discuss aseptic filling of unstable drug products. We will cover three drug product sensitivities in depth, light, temperature, and shear sensitive products. The takeaways from today will include what a typical sterile fill finish process looks like and implications for unstable drug products, formulation and filling techniques and the best practices for protecting unstable drug products, and what to expect after your fill, storage, labeling and packaging and distribution for unstable drug products. Today from Berkshire Sterile, we have Chief Technical Officer, Dr. Andrea Wagner and Vice President of Manufacturing, Tyler Rush to speak. My name is Sarah and I will be your host for today. Very quickly, we welcome your questions during this presentation. To ask a question, select the arrow in the toolbar at the right-hand side of your screen, write in your question and click send. And now that's out of the way, let's get started. So I'll first invite Andrea to speak. Andrea, can you describe to us what a typical fill finish process looks like? Hi, Sarah, I would love to. There are three phases in a fill finish project, the preparation, the execution, and the review and release. Perhaps that's four. Let's start with the preparation phase. When you first sign onto a fill finish project, you will meet with the team of the contract manufacturing organization that you contracted with. And you need to hand over all critical information about the product and manufacturing process to them so they can begin their work. Any information, it's really critical. The, this involves any documents or information pertaining to the tech transfer, your LIO cycles, your formulation, your pH ranges for the process engineering group to use, and any documents pertaining to your in-process or release testing for the lots to perform a method transfer or development where it's needed. Once any and all development is wrapped up, a process protocol or master batch record and any supporting analytical test methods, SOPs, protocols, and material specs will be drafted. The master batch record is the most important document that is created. It serves as a step-by-step -step protocol that every team member and employee involved in the CGMP fill finish project will be referencing when performing your CGMP run. Those documents will be reviewed by the CMO's internal quality assurance team and with you as the client. Once that process receives the green light, you will perform your engineering run to test drive the new process and make sure that it's ready for success in a GMP setting. In the lab, analysts will perform feasibility runs to do some, if not all, um, testing. If all goes well with the engineering run and all necessary changes to the batch record are performed, then you will be ready to begin your CGMP fill or run. The CMO's quality team will review and release all necessary quality documents, including the batch record, to prepare for the GMP run. The CMO will source all your materials involved in your fill and perform quality testing to release the products. As products come in, they will remain in the warehouse or respective temperature-controlled units until activities begin. We now move on to the execution stage. This starts with formulating the bulk drug product. At BSM, this is performed by a dedicated formulation team within a grade C class 10,000 clean room. Some products are a simple thaw, mix, and filter. Other products require putting a powder drug substance into a solution and adding excipients. Each process is unique in which it demands the time and attention. Everything, including how long the product is mixed, in-process analytical testing, the exact measurements of every excipient added is recorded into the batch record and verified by another supporting employee. Once the product is formulated, it would be held overnight at the appropriate temperature controlled unit or go directly to filling. The bulk drug product solution is connected to the filling line through an aseptic connection. The manufacturing team will have already cleaned and prepped the filling line. At BSM, we use isolators for all GMP filling and formulation, for that matter. The line will have already undergone vapor hydrogen peroxide or VHP cycle to sanitize the line in preparation for filling. Once the drug product is connected and initial weight checks are passing, 
then the filling begins. We use either peristaltic or piston pump to pump the solution during filling and all formulation and filling activities occur at room temperature under LED or fluorescent lighting. Once the drug product is filled, the product is placed into a work in progress temperature control unit, which is either to be 20 to 25 or a two to eight chamber. At this point in the process, the drug product has been filtered and filled, and we now reach the final phase of fill finish, the review and release. The visual inspection team will remove the product from the work in progress cooler to perform a 100% inspection and an additional AQL inspection, which is a smaller inspection of a portion of the lot to confirm that the reject rate is accurate. The AQL is performed by Quality Assurance at Berkshire Sterile. If this all passes, then the drug product will be moved to the released product chambers to await analytical testing, microbiology results, and a quality review of the batch record. Moving the product to these new coolers allows the product to be stored at the final storage temperature. At BSM, we have negative 80, negative 20, 2 to 8, and 20 to 25 coolers and chambers to accommodate all types of drug products. Once test results come back and all deviations are closed out and QA has thoroughly reviewed the completed batch record, QA will initiate a release of the drug product. The warehouse group will prepare the product for shipping and may go straight to the clinic, to the client, or to another CMO that provides packaging, labeling, storage, and distribution services. Whatever the client decides, this is what a typical fill finish project from start to finish looks like. Any additional batches are much less involved. And since the protocols, test methods, and material specifications have all been created and approved, Edits may be made to them if we find that we need to make changes after a fill. In this case, a document change request will be initiated to make these updates. There are several product sensitivities, light, temperature, shear, that we often work with. And where following the typical fill finish process is not ideal. Light sensitive drugs would be exposed to the LED and fluorescent lighting of the formulation suites, filling rooms, and coolers. The formulation and filling processes are performed at room temperature and products with shear sensitivities can be affected by the pumping and mixing motions that the product is subjected to. But that being said, we are able to make accommodations to protect these drug products during formulation, filling, visual inspection, and shipping. Thank you, Andrea. Now I'm hoping that Tyler can help us describe some modifications that can be made for sensitive drug products. So Tyler, can you discuss these drug product sensitivities and then describe how the fill finish process can be adapted for them? Hi, Sarah. Yes, I will cover the three common drug sensitivities, light sensitivity, temperature sensitivity, and shear sensitivity, and how we deal with them at BSM to protect the product. Let's start with light sensitivity products. Typically, these products are damaged when they are exposed to higher energy wavelengths of light, such as those in the blue, purple, and ultraviolet range. Other products may absorb other wavelengths. For example, we once filled a product that absorbed both red and blue light and was only protected under green light. Light sensitivity becomes a problem when manufacturing product under fluorescent or white LED lights because these lights emit the light across the visible light spectrum, and this can damage the product. Fortunately, we can overcome this by keeping the product in the dark and, if the sensitivity is extreme, by removing the unwanted wavelengths in the lights we use. During formulation, the mixing vessel that the product is prepared in, the tubing and the filters making up the filter assembly, and the sterile vessel we are filtering into are all wrapped to protect the drug product from light. In extreme cases, we can also handle light-sensitive API in amber-colored containers and tubing to protect it from light, or set it up in an appropriate environment to protect it. We can place sheeting or tubes around the lights and block out the windows to change the color of the light in the room. So we can adjust all the lights to be entirely amber lighting and essentially remove blue light from the room. This is an extreme measure, but we have done this before. During filling, the drug product solution remains wrapped to keep it in the dark. 
and we also wrap the fill lines up to the point that they enter the isolator. Unfortunately, the fill line that's inside the isolator cannot be wrapped, and the product may be exposed to light within the isolator. However, the time that it's exposed is very short, and we typically include an extra flush of the line to be performed and an in-process or overnight hold to remove any product that was exposed to the light for an extended period. Also, like mentioned earlier, opaque tubing can be used, or the lights in the room and the isolator can be adjusted to remove high-energy blue and purple wavelengths. For extremely light-sensitive products, we've changed the lights we used in the formulation and filling rooms. For products that were sensitive to both red and blue light, for example, we place sheeting and tubes over our clean room lights to filter out the red and blue light. The formulation and fill were performed entirely in green light. We have even covered the windows to prevent light from outside the clean rooms from coming in and contaminating the light in the rooms we are working in. However, once product is filled into its final container, typically amber glass for light sensitive products, it's protected from light. The next step in the process is for the product to be visually inspected. There are no special challenges for filling into amber vials, but amber vials do affect the visual inspection. These are classified as difficult to inspect in our visual inspection SOP because it's more difficult to see the particulates. After inspection, our product is placed in packaging that will keep them in the dark. Bulk vials are placed in opaque boxes, which is our current standard practice, and ready-to-use containers, either vials, syringes, or cartridges, are placed back into their nests and tubs, and a transparent plastic cover is snapped over it. For light-sensitive product, the manufacturing team will place a sheet of foil between the drug product and the plastic cover to keep the product in the dark. However, we are currently working on getting opaque covers, eliminating the need for the foil sheet. These are all the modifications we make for light-sensitive products. So now, let's discuss temperature-sensitive products. This is the most common sensitivity we see at BSM, and we often get asked if we filter and fill at room temperature. We do filter and fill at room temperature, but we have strategies to keep your product chilled during this process. Let's first discuss formulation. When we receive your drug product, it's unpackaged and inspected for damage before it's placed into its appropriate temperature controlled unit, which is often a freezer for very temperature sensitive drug products. The time from receiving your product to storing it is less than 10 minutes. When materials are being pulled for formulation activities, the drug substance is removed directly from the freezer if it's a powder. If the drug substance is a frozen solution, then it will be thawed in the appropriate temperature controlled unit for set duration, which is all detailed in the batch record. For example, we will do an overnight thaw at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. All materials are then brought into our formulation room, which is at room temperature, and the product is formulated per the batch record. We can use jacketed mixing vessels both to prepare the formulation and to filter into. Cooled water from 6 to 15 degrees C is circulated in the jacketed vessel to control the temperature of the drug product and ensures that these products are not exposed to higher temperatures during the formulation and manufacturing process. There's not much we can do for the product in the filtration assembly, but filtering occurs so quickly that the time the drug product is exposed to room temperature while being filtered is so short that it typically does not affect the product. After formulation, the bulk drug product is usually held overnight for filling the next day. For temperature sensitive drug products, the formulation will be moved to a two to eight degree controlled storage location. Or if the product cannot withstand the hold, the product will be immediately connected to the filling line. Temperature sensitive drug products are filled from a water jacketed vessel, which is cooled using a calibrated chiller unit. The chiller unit sits outside the isolator next to the bulk drug product solution. The water is circulated from the chiller unit through a port in the bottom of the vessel where it fills the vessel bottom to top, then flows out the port on top of the fill vessel and back to the chiller unit. Once product is filled, it's removed immediately to the work in process cooler. The coldest work in process cooler we have is two to eight degrees Celsius. This product will remain here until the visual inspection team is able to inspect the product. We've never inspected products in the two to eight degree temperature controlled units, and we do not freeze product between filling and visual inspection. 
Product is only inspected in the designated inspection area, which is controlled room temperature to room temperature. If the client is concerned about the time spent in the two to eight degree cooler, then they can request expedited visual inspection so the product can be immediately inspected. Or in extreme cases, we can perform visual inspection off the line during a fill so that the product can be visually inspected and complete visual inspection AQL before it's immediately moved to a frozen storage location. When this occurs, each tray of product is immediately brought into the visual inspection suite after it's filled. So visual inspection occurs alongside of sterile filling operations. After visual inspection, the batch is moved to storage locations dedicated for finished product. They will remain here until the lot is released by QA. For frozen products, the options for storage are minus 20, minus 40, or minus 80 degrees Celsius. Once the lot receives QA approval and release, we prepare the drug product for shipping. Chilled or frozen drug products are always packed with the temp tail in the package to continuously track the temperature of the product during its journey. We use Sensatec United Technologies temp tails, and there are two different types that we use for chilled or frozen products. Probless dry ice for minus 15 to minus 90 centigrade and two to eight degrees centigrade. These temp tails track the temperature of the shipment along its journey and couriers and receivers can access the information by scanning the temp tails. There are some temp tails that offer live data and GPS tracking, but we do not offer these. Minus 20, minus 40, and minus 80 C items are transferred right from the coolers into the shipping container. We remove the product from the cooler and place the release sticker on each box of product. The product immediately goes in the shipping container that is already prepared with cool packs or dry ice and the temp tail is placed inside the box of product. When we load the shipping containers, we activate the temp tail to mark the moment in time when we loaded the material and to initiate data collection. This is the full fill finish process for temperature sensitive liquid fills, but we do have several clients that opt for lyophilization services to preserve their drug product or eliminate the challenges of storage and distribution of frozen product. The process is not too different for lyophilized products, but we will discuss it here. If the product is very unstable in solution, a client may opt to freeze dry their product. Most of these products require frozen storage conditions when they arrive, so they will follow the formulation and filling strategies that we use for temperature sensitive products. The one difference is that in formulation, we typically add more bulking excipients, like mannitol or sucrose, to get a better quality cake in lyophilization. These requirements can be determined during the lyo cycle development, which is a service we offer at BSM. There's not too much that's unique to filling lyophilized drug product other than the added step of directing the filled vials to the lyophilizer and then out of the lyophilizers once the cycle has been completed. Our semi-automated and automated filling lines are equipped with isolator-based lyophilizers. These lyos are sealed off while the cycle is running which allows us to VHP the other chambers in the filling line and perform liquid fills of other products while the lyo cycle is occurring. This is reduces the amount of time that our filling line is out of commission while the lyo cycle is in process. Once the cycle is complete, we sanitize the chambers. The vials will have to pass through to reach the capper with vapor hydrogen peroxide. We then unload the product in the isolator and transport the vials to the capper located in a wraps. Lyophilization helps protect the drug product, so we often don't have the same concern for expedited visual inspection, but lyophilization does change requirements for visual inspection. Inspectors look for proper formation of the cake, discoloration of the cake, collapsing of the cake, and they ensure there is no liquid present in the vial. We do not reconstitute vials to visually inspect them. Finally, we get to the last common drug product sensitivity that we see, shear sensitivity. Clients with the shear sensitive product are often concerned that mixing and pumping the solution can destroy or degrade their drug substance. We use peristaltic pumps to move the solution through the filter and these pumps provide a gentle pumping action at low speeds. We can also use pressure filtration on shear sensitive products. 
We use magnetic stir bars and stir plates in the formulation to mix APIs and excipients or drug products. On a large scale, we use the Ross Vertical Blender to handle shear sensitive products. This vertical blender is designed for reliable, gentle mixing of friable solids, abrasive materials, and shear sensitive products. It consists of a low speed auger that orbits the periphery of the conical vessel while gently lifting the material upward. In sterile filling, we use either a piston or a peristaltic pump to fill the product. We can fill at a slow speed to reduce shear, but the best way to overcome any challenges with shear sensitive products is to perform several fill studies in an engineering run to optimize the process and determine if changes can be made to reduce product degradation. During visual inspection, it's standard practice to swirl product to suspend and move any particulates in the solution so they may be easily spotted. This is only a gentle swirl, so most products are not sensitive to that. But some products have required that our operators only invert the product per client request. This does diminish the detectability of particulates, so this should only be performed in extreme cases. Sometimes the shear sensitivity of a drug product can be limited by adjusting the formulation and adding excipients that can limit damage done by shear forces. Protein aggregation, for example, is a big concern for monoclonal antibodies, and adjusting the physical or chemical properties in the drug product can reduce the likelihood of this occurring. The formulation should be fine-tuned during development to mitigate this risk. We also have a new method of filling very low volume batches of a liter of solution or less that is excellent for shear sensitive products. This method is our low loss fill process and it was designed to limit drug product loss. We did this by removing the pump entirely. The solution is dispensed by pressurizing the bulk drug product to about one PSI or greater for more viscous solutions. This provides the push for the drug product to flow out of the filled needle. Dispensing is controlled by a time-operated actuator that is triggered by a foot pedal. When the actuator is triggered, it creates an opening allowing the product to be expelled through the filled needle, which then closes after the set duration. The volume of the product dispensed is controlled by increasing or decreasing the duration. The actuator remains open while keeping the pressure in the vessel constant. This process does not involve any pumping, only gentle pressurization. This is an excellent option for very low volume, shear sensitive drug products. This is all the sensitivities that we will cover today. But to recap, I've created a table with all the changes that can be performed to accommodate these sensitivities at each step of the process. The key to protecting your drug product is to communicate with your CMO and partner who has the expertise and capability to help accommodate your product sensitivities and the product against them. If you're in development, it's best to work with a CDMO for this work because they understand the process that your product will undergo during fill finish, and they will be able to develop a formulation that will be manufacturable. For example, at BSM, we can determine your product sensitivities in development, optimize buffer composition and pH to reduce these sensitivities and test them on our manufacturing equipment to ensure that your product will be repeatably manufacturable. Thank you, Tyler. I believe all that's left to cover now is uh, what happens after the fill finish process. So I'm gonna return this to Andrea, who can speak to the downstream processes. Andrea, can, do you mind covering this? We do not perform several downstream activities at our site. Things like labeling, packaging, kitting, long-term storage, or distribution. We do have a partner, Sharp Services, that provides all of this work. So what happens when your product is shipped out of your fill finish provider? And what implications does that have to your drug product? Our clients tell us where they would like their product to go. It can go to them, straight to the clinic, to a lab, or to their choice of packaging and distribution partners. If the product goes to a packaging distribution partner, such as Sharp, you will be able to have all these downstream processes perform for you, and many sites have accommodations in place for sensitive drug products. 
A packaging and distribution partner can help with managing inventory, patient interaction and drug supplies, comparator sourcing, secondary packaging, labeling, and storage and distribution. So let's quickly talk about those services and processes and how this will affect your clinical or commercial product. First, let's discuss managing your project. Whether you are in clinical trials or have a commercial product, you should have a system to manage your drug production, supply, and results. Using an inventory management system, IMS, and interactive response technology, IRT, is helpful because these systems can anticipate your supply needs and record, track, and analyze any patient transactions and responses to the medication. Comparator sourcing, nearly two thirds of the clinical trials use comparators and co-therapies. And a big challenge for a lot of sponsors is sourcing these therapies. A packaging and distribution partner can help develop a strategy that will address all of your study needs and gather the required documentation, overcome any regulatory challenge, and anticipate expiry dates of the medicines and lead times to source them to keep your study supplied and going. Okay, now let's discuss secondary packaging. Any investigational products and study drugs should be packaged to prevent contamination, deterioration during transport and storage, and protect blinding where applicable. Your secondary packaging can also be designed to aid patient usability. If you have a temperature sensitive drug product, you may opt to have your packaging performed at two to eight or negative 20, be placed on dry ice, or to have your packaging partner document the times that these activities occur. The size of your packaging will also affect the shipping cost. This is especially true to kits that need to be shipped at special temperatures. You should also optimize your packaging to ensure that hospital sites or patient homes will have enough storage space for your drug product while it is in use and in your packaging. If you have a light sensitive drug product, your packaging and distribution partner may be able to label and package your product under amber lighting. Our partner Sharp has this capability. For example, you have a lot of choices in your packaging. For example, you can have your vials packaged in a shrouded or blinded studios or add ancillary items in your packaging. There's a lot of choices and no one size fits all solutions. Let's talk about labeling. Labeling is more than just the sticker. And again, you will be faced with many decisions during this process. Do you want to personalize the label for the patient or use a more generic informational label? Do you want to use a single panel sticker that is country and language specific or a booklet that can be used for multiple countries that speak multiple languages? What kind of material will the sticker need to be applied to? What shape? Are there specific storage and transportation conditions? If you have a temperature sensitive drug product, you may be able to have your labeling performed in the coolers. At Sharp, for example, you can perform secondary packaging and labeling within two to eight, negative 20, and place on dry ice. Finally, we get to the last step in your supply chain storage and distribution. This process has become increasingly more complex over the last 10 years because we are now seeing an increase in demand for cold chain requirements with more biologics and large molecule projects in clinical trials. Because this is such a large topic, I will only say today that this process can be very complicated to set up and organize. You will need to consider which countries you are shipping products to, what regulatory requirements there are for your depots, how you audit your depot network, if you need several local depots or lower regional or central depots to supply your patient and the clinics, and how import requirements, transportation time, and cost of your drug product will affect your distribution. Like I mentioned earlier, 
a storage and distribution partner can help guide you in all of these downstream activities. We are partnered with Sharp, who offers all of these services, and our clients can choose to use them or go a different route. Thank you, Andrea. That is the end of today's presentation. In just a moment, we will transition to the Q&A portion of the webinar. Again, to ask a question, select the word bubble that appears in the toolbar at the right-hand side of your screen. An area to type in your question will appear. So write us your questions and hit send and we'll display those for our speakers to answer. I'm going to give everyone a moment to ask their questions. Today's webinar is the seventh webinar of this series, Sterile Filling 101. All of our upcoming events are listed here and recordings of previous webinars are available both on our website or YouTube channel. In May, we will be airing our next webinar regarding unique challenges with specialty container filling. Following the end of this event, I will be sending you an email with a sign-up link to each of these events, but you can also sign up directly by going to berkshiresterilemanufacturing.com slash the future of small-scale sterile filling. And the events will be listed there for you to register to. Okay, it looks like we've received all the questions that we're going to get. And I want to direct this first one to Tyler. The question is, is it better to use a piston pump or a peristaltic pump for shear sensitive products? Great question, Sarah. I think to answer that question really depends on the product characteristics. Uh, for example, just recently we had a client who initially wanted to use a piston pump. We found that, that or the product was too shear sensitive. For the peristaltic pump, we then switched to a piston pump, encountered some other problems with there, and actually ended up utilizing the low loss filler and found that that was the least shear for their particular product. So it's really the filling studies and engineering ones that will help us come to that determination. Thank you, Tyler. We got one on inspection, and I'm going to direct this to Andrea. The question is, do you inspect lyophilized vials for particulate? Yes, we do. We uh, inspect all of our vials for particulate. Um, with Lyo, it's considered a difficult to inspect product, and therefore it has some additional testing that occurs after the visual inspection team gets through with it. Thank you, Andrea. That was well said. Um, I'm going to go back to Tyler. This question is asking, how do you protect oxygen-sensitive drug products during formulation and filling? We have a couple different ways to protect products uh, that are sensitive to oxygen during filling. We have the capability on uh, both our semi-automated and automated filling lines and manual filling lines to do a nitrogen purge during filling. And we also have the option on the fillers to do a nitrogen uh, vacuum purge. Uh, the nitrogen purging typically gets the oxygen down to around 10% and the nitrogen purge vacuum fill can get the oxygen residual headspace down to below 5%. Very well said. I have another question for you. The question is, what happens if you have a hold in a fill that is temperature sensitive? So for a temperature sensitive product that's being held overnight, which for us is four hours, uh, as I already mentioned, it will, the, it will be on a jacketed tank with a recirculating chiller to keep it cool. And then before we can resume filling operations, uh, we have to do a purge of all the lines and then repeat the weight checks. Thank you, Tyler. This next question will go to Andrea. How do you determine which particulates are foreign or product related? Yeah, so there's in intrinsic uh, particulates, meaning things that come in through the manufacturing process. Uh, there's particulates that are associated with that. And those are fairly well um, identified by our visual inspectors. They're not very prevalent. Um, and you can, we've tested for those um, with outsourced labs such as Macron to um, see what those are about when we see them. Uh, for intrinsic particulates, this would be part of the drug product that we're actually inspecting for. Typically, you'll see them in every vial or syringe. Uh, it will be a precipitation effect, typically, and that those units get shipped out to 
a company called KBI typically, or Macron, you could do it at Macron, but KBI is better with proteins. And they can determine whether it is the protein that is precipitating out, in which case you need to look at the formulation, the suitability of the formulation. Well said. Uh, this next one's going to go to Tyler. The question asks, what do you do if the drug is shear sensitive and also viscous? For drugs that are the shear sensitive and viscous, we can fill those from a pressure vessel where we overpressurize the vessel to help the product get through and get to and through either the piston pump or peristaltic pump. Thank you, Tyler. And our final question that we'll take will go to Andrea. The question is, my product needs to be stored at negative 40 C. What can you do? So if you need your product stored at a temperature that we currently don't have qualified, that's not a showstopper. We can buy a storage unit and qualify it and hook it to our um, facility monitoring system so we can monitor it continuously. And we can store your product in that. It would be a dedicated client um, storage container, however. Andrea, thank you so much for that answer. We will end on that question, but I do wanna give a huge thank you to everyone that joined today's webinar and thank you to our speakers, Andrea Wagner and Tyler Rush for their input in today's event. To all of our viewers that are here, keep your eye out for my email and don't forget to sign up for our other events, which you can do by going to berkshiresterilemanufacturing.com slash the future of small scale sterile filling. I really hope you took a lot away from today's presentation and I hope to see you again in our future webinars.